Hello all. Welcome to another episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today is the third part of our summaries looking at the Invisalign European Scientific Symposium. Today we're looking at the topic of expansion. Now we've got two studies to look at. The first is by Dr. Sylvia Caruso looking at the arch expansion pattern using clear aligners, a three-dimensional retrospective study. So what question did they ask? Well they asked what is the amount of expansion that can be achieved through using Invisalign first. What did they use? Well, they looked at 20 patients between the ages of 6 and 10 who had moderate to severe crowding. They looked at the changes that took place between the dentition but also changes that took place at the gingival level of these teeth. So what did they find? Well, they found that the most predictable expansion that took place was in the buccal position between the primary canines to the primary canine. Predictability was 99% of achieving the 4 millimeters of expansion. The least predictable on the buccal surface was that of the first permanent molar to the first permanent molar, still achieving 88% of predictability and that's 3.8 millimeters that took place. Now interestingly they looked at the palatal measurements as well. Now they found that the palatal surface expansion was unpredictable between 38% and 42% of the posterior teeth. However, the primary canines were predictable. The conclusions for this study were that using Invisalign first for expansion is predictable in the buccal plane. However, in the palatal direction, only the primary canine region was a predictable area. Now moving on to the second study. This was one carried out by Tommaso Castroflorio and Dr. Francesco Gagno. And this was looking at first maxillary expansion with aligners in growing patients. So similar to the first study. Here they looked at 43 patients at the age of 8 and this time we were looking at morphological superimposition to see what had happened. What did they find? Well they found that similar to the first study, expansion was the greatest between the primary canine to the primary canine region, achieving more than 3 millimeters of expansion. When it came to the first permanent molars, there were the least amount of expansion took place, approximately 2 millimeters. They also looked at the volume increase that took place in the palate, a topic which is of uh, relevance at this stage in the conversations about airflow and disease to paediatric patients. And they showed that 38% of increased volume took place by using aligners to the palate. The conclusions here were that expansion, similar to the first study, was greater anteriorly than posteriorly using Invisalign first. And there was an increase in the volume of the palate. There was a clinical pearl that was given as well and that was to carry out IPR posteriorly mesial and distal to the first permanent molars if there is some crowding. And the idea here was to prevent a loss of tracking taking place in the AP direction of the first permanent molar and therefore more predictability when it came to transverse changes as well. So overall from these two studies we can conclude that expansion can take place using aligners. It's greater anterior than it is posterior, and it's more predictable in the buccal plane than it is in the palatal plane. So what's my thoughts on these two studies? Well, I was glad to see some concordance between these two studies. They had similar numbers when it came to the amount of expansion that took place. Also from these studies, it matches what we know from other studies when it came to expansion. So the Cochrane Review by Agostino in 2014 showed using removable appliances had approximately 2 to 4 millimeters of expansion. What was interesting is that when it came to the differences between the buccal and palatal, it matches our understanding of how aligners work. They are tipping appliances and the disparity between the two shows that there has been some tipping that has occurred. Now, these studies were not randomized controlled trials, but it would be great to compare the use of aligners for expansion to other removable appliances, to fixed and RME and other auxiliaries such as quad helices. That's it for another episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Please do subscribe, and tomorrow we'll have our final episode of the Invisalign Conference, and we look forward to it.